That is appropriate because that's what grandma wanted. Great grandma wanted for this day to be a celebration of her faith and her life in Christ Jesus and her, as she put it, entrance into heaven. We're here this day, and on behalf of Loeen's entire family, thank you for being here. Hank thanks you, and all of her kids and grandkids and great-grandkids appreciate your presence here. Both those of you joining us in person, and we know many of you joining us online this morning as well from wherever you're joining us. As we gather this day, we gather in tears and sorrow for the separation we now experience, but also the joy knowing that that separation is temporary in light of Jesus and the resurrection and the life that he brings to each one of us. As we begin our time together, this morning, please take an opportunity to make sure your, your phone's on silent or off so that as we gather together, we can keep our focus on that, him who is our resurrection and life, Jesus Christ. I invite you as you're able to please stand and join us for the first hymn Loween picked for this day, Great is Thy Faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, and who by your breath gave us life. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life. 
Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. In baptism, Loween was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul writes, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Louine and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We read together responsibly the, 20, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I invite Loeen's grandson, Chase Walter, to please come forward for our readings this day. Good morning. These are some of uh, my grandma's favorite verses. I'll start with Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 13, 5 through 6. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 20. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now if Christ is proclaimed and ra as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. John 14, verses one through six. Let not your hearts be troubled, Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Please join me in together as we confess the faith Loween professed with her mouth as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He de descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Grace, mercy, and especially peace be to you who were dearly loved by and dearly loved Loween, and who most importantly know that Loween was loved by her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ. We heard Chase read it just a moment ago. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
I've trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Maybe not your normal text for a funeral service. Maybe not the first words you think of today, rejoicing in the Lord always, but yes, they are appropriate. Loween would have you remember this day as those two favorite of her Bible passages. By her own requests and plans for this moment, Loween wanted our focus to be on the main thing, the most important thing for her this day, which isn't just remembering her life and telling stories and sharing wonderful memories, which we hope you'll do for a while in the parish hall at the luncheon afterwards. You can do that. But she wanted to keep the first things the first things first, to remember that this isn't just about her. This is about her Savior, Jesus Christ, a Savior that has conquered sin and death by grace through faith for her. For today, her desire is that all that she knows and all that she loves would know that peace and that comfort and that assurance that comes with knowing Jesus Christ. It's hard for me, as I thought about this day in 19 years of ministry, as a pastor and 13 years of those as her pastor, I don't think I've had anyone so my adamant in my life about how this day would go. Many of you know throughout the years, Louise had the ups and the downs of the sicknesses and in health and hang faithfully by her side in the midst of it all. But I can say for years in those visits, Louise would talk about this moment right here, right now, more than anything else. It's not that she was wanting to die. She was wanting to live, not by her own strength or her own might, but by the strength and the might of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, even in the hospital that last week of her life, two different times, that's th this moment came up. From the what songs we would sing to even, yes, Pastor, I think this would be the best thing for you to wear so that we keep the main things, the main things about Jesus. Jesus, only about Jesus. She left behind some notes for this day, and I love how she wanted our focus to be on something important. She, she wrote it, and I, I can't say it better than her, so these are Loween's words. She says, please let my funeral be a celebration of life and faith and my entrance into heaven. I might be a bit afraid of what I might endure to die, but I'm not a bit afraid of dying. I know that my faith in Christ assures me that I will live in heaven. I firmly believe this, even though I in no way deserve it. God the Father loved me enough to send his son Jesus to die for my sins. The Holy Spirit has worked this faith in me. Therefore, death holds no fear. To someday be reunited there with our entire family is my prayer. Those words from the wean. The hymns of the faith that she herself are picked for this day focus on that life of, of Jesus, as well as, as the Bible passages we have read today were taken from a list that she had written in the front part of her Bible. There's a list there, and I actually made a copy of it myself because I found it helpful. In that list were, were lists of promises of God that he makes throughout the Scripture, promises that God who is faithful to his people and faithful to his promises to, to keep. Psalms about the resurrection chapter we read a moment ago. Songs about a, or words about a merciful God, God being our fortress, being still, Christ alone, trust, songs of praise, answers to the question why. On and on those Bible passages were listed there as reminders of God's faithful promises to her that she wanted to highlight in the front part of that Bible. You know, those promises for her, they, they started at a very young age. When in the water and the word of her baptism, Christ joined himself to her and declared her to be his beloved daughter on June 14th, 1936. By the power of the Holy Spirit working through her, that gift of faith was given to her, and she publicly confirmed that faith on April 2nd in 1950 there at Zion Lutheran Church in Lee, Nebraska. Noted in her Bible, actually, I found it later, was that confirmation passage. And that confirmation passage with their perfect words for right now. Psalm 145, verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, and he also hears their cry, and he saves them. On March 8th, the Lord heard her cry to be with him and answered that cry. 
calling her into his near presence to meet him face to face in heaven. While she was not eager to to leave you behind, she was prepared to leave knowing that for sure her Savior Jesus would lead her home into his presence. What a beautiful thing to be able to see that gift of faith shine through the gloom of death and point to a certain and sure hope of life everlasting even as she drew her final breaths. With Resurrection Sunday or Easter just a few days away in the historical event that we remember not just of the death of Jesus on a Friday we call good, but because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that death doesn't get the final answer. I love, as I thought about that again, those words from 1 Corinthians 15 and the gospel writers that it was first witnessed by by a group of women, a group of women who had gone to the tomb to prepare and finish Jesus' body for burial. It had been done in haste on, on Friday by a couple of guys who had requested the body of Jesus to be laid in this tomb that had never been used, but there wasn't time because the Sabbath was coming on which they could do no work, and so they buried Jesus in the tomb in haste only for the women to come and finish the job the next time, the maybe first LWML or ladies' aid that Loween was a part of. I'm sure she would have been a part of that group. Going there early in the morning thinking you're finishing one ending, a burial, and an ending. Death has won, but only to find out death hadn't won. The grave was empty. Jesus was alive, appearing first even to these women, testifying that they got to be the eyewitnesses to the event that changes everything, the resurrection of Jesus. You know, one of the reasons I'm wearing this particular cross around my, my neck today is not just because Lowen was specific about what I wore today, but also because she really liked this cross every time I wore it. And she liked that I wore it because it's a reminder that while this cross, she would tell me, is beautiful, this cross is also broken. It's made up of a bunch of pieces of, of broken glass. And if you see broken glass anywhere, you, you would clean it up. With construction going around here, we've been having lots of cleanups, lots of broken things that we have to keep sweeping up and throwing it away. But the broken glass on the cross is a reminder that when it comes to our brokenness, when it comes to our guilt, when it comes to our shame, Jesus has, has taken all of that stuff. We would rather hide. We would rather just throw away. He says, no, I'm going to take it upon myself so that I may take it with me to the cross. I may bear the weight upon me of that sin, of that brokenness, of that shame, of that guilt, so that it might not separate you from him. And so a beautiful artist takes this object and uses these pieces, puts them together in the shape of the cross, reminding us what Jesus did on that cross, taking our brokenness so that we could be with him forever. He doesn't wait for us to get our lives in order as if we could ever do that. He went first. Where we fall short, Jesus comes through with the debt of sin being paid in full, forgiveness freely and abundantly available. That passage from 1 Corinthians 15 speaks of that event, that important historical event and the witnesses of that event and how that resurrection of Jesus means that sins are paid in full. That those who have hope in Christ can look forward to that same joyous news of their own resurrection and life everlasting, even as Loween confessed with her mouth as we did a moment ago with those words of the Apostle Creed. Jesus said to his own disciples, even before he dies, that promise and that, that hope on that good day before Good Friday, on that Monday, Thursday that we remember. And he said those words of very resurrection and life that anyone who believes in him will not die but will, will live forever, a hope that he says even at the grave of his dear friend Lazarus. We may think in this moment, well, has Jesus come through for Loween? We know Loween now is separated body and soul and rests now her soul in the presence of Jesus. And we look forward to the good news of that day when body and soul will be united, when Christ will return, and the resurrection and the life of the world to come. For Loween, that that time is no more. That, That pain is no more. The struggles to breathe, never again. She is with Christ. And for we who remain, we give thanks for the privilege to have been loved and been able to love her. And at the same time, we can know by Jesus that gift of faith in him for our own promise of resurrection as well. As Jesus prepared his followers for his death and resurrection, he said these words in John 14, verse 1, which Chase read a moment ago. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that you may be where I am. 
and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas, one of his disciples, said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus said to him these beautiful words, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father, not by our own merit or, or worthiness. Loween confessed that even as she thought about this day, it wasn't about what she's done, but it's about what Jesus does. That through Jesus, there is a way, there is the truth, and there is hope, not just for this life, as we heard in 1 Corinthians, but in life everlasting. Those promises of eternal life are a reality for Loween because of what Jesus, her great shepherd, has done for her, leading her from death to life. Today we mourn, and we can't help but also celebrate and give thanks for the privilege each of us has to have loved and been loved by Loween. We give thanks to God for the way she was a part of our life. And by faith, we don't say goodbye forever, but we say, we're going to see you soon, Louis, in the presence of Jesus, the very resurrection and life. On Friday night, as Louis closed her eyes in death and awaited to open them in life everlasting in the presence of Jesus, I'm convinced that my last words to her that evening, which were a quote from Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew that you see on the cover of your bulletin, were some of the first words she heard from Jesus when she awoke in his presence. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Well done, faithful servant. She was ready to be with Jesus. We were ready for her to be with Jesus as well. It's still sad because death is sad. It's a separation from the one we love with whom we were made to be in community with, but it's a joy as well. For we know she is with the Lord by grace through faith in Jesus so we mourn, we'll shed tears today, and that's perfectly fine. Jesus did it too at the grave of one he dearly loved. But as Loween marked in her own handwriting in her Bible, those tears don't last forever. They can be turned to joy. In her plans for this service, there was written what I thought was perhaps a poem that she had written, but in fact was a stanza by the hymn, By Grace I'm Saved, and I think it puts perfectly into words her own faith. By grace, on this I'll rest. When I am dying, in Jesus' promise I rejoice, for though I know my heart's condition, I also know my Savior's voice. My heart is glad, all grief has flown, since I am saved by grace alone. So until that day, when we as well join Jesus face to face by faith, by grace alone, may the peace of God which keeps our hearts and minds and passes all understanding. Keep those hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment and sing about that amazing grace.
It is that amazing grace that we rest in, find comfort and assurance that grace wins every time, even over death. As we stand, I invite you to join me in our prayers of the church. Almighty God, you've knit your chosen people together into one communion in the body of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with Christ through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of Loween and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a short confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the fellowship of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead and the assurance of a holy and certain hope and joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we can't understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Loween and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and that by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. Strengthen us in the confidence that because Jesus lives, we may live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, one God now and forever, and who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy, and you bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor, and may he give you his peace. Amen.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to pray for us as we head to the meal and ask you to join us for this time of fellowship. Lord, we thank you on this day that we can remember our dear sister in Christ, Loeen, and that we can give thanks that she is with you rejoicing in your presence. Until that day, Lord Jesus, of our own death and you call us home, help us to keep us in that same true faith that you, Jesus, have saved us by grace through your cross and by your empty tomb. Bless us now in our times of fellowship and sharing of stories and memories of the wonderful ways you have worked through your good and faithful servant. Have blessed this food to the strengthening of our bodies and our bodies in service to you and to your world. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. I invite Hanks and the rest of the family to lead us over into the parish hall and ask that you please join us there as well. Also, the loop pictures will be playing in there as well too, so please do join us for this time of fellowship. This is the day the Lord has made.